Hey guys, you are going to need to pay attention here because I have decided to let you in on live or I guess it won't be live because you'll be seeing film. It's like almost live. You will get to see one of my weekends, one of my three day holiday weekends as it happens. And believe you me, you are going to be utterly and completely disamazed. So, first, let's start off with some fashion sense. Everyone who has any fashion consciousness, subconsciousness at all, is going to see that I'm wearing the new restaurant t-shirt. You're going to want one. Don't covet when you can get. There's a difference between coveting and getting. Empower yourself not to be covetous and become the getting kind. I always say, you going to be one or are you going to buy one? Anyway, got this at a restaurant concert. First one in, I don't know, a year and a half, something like that. I don't know. Every Everyone exaggerates the time um, frame or duration of COVID. But anyway, let's get back on track here. Let's Let's get back off track. Anyway, let's talk about fashion consciousness i learned from my friend friend see that's hard for me to say because i don't have that many michael keen uh, that your rear headshot is just important as important to your s superstar potential as your front Photoshop. Anyway, thank you, Michael Keane, for pointing that out yet again. I think Michael has a collection of me from the back at concerts that I think the Getty is going to be after someday. Hey, Google my name in Getty. You'll see that I'm in Getty images. Yeah, miracles happen. Just knock it off. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, I need some help counting these off. First, we are going to visit a world-renowned luthier, for real. Then we're going to go see one of my guitars in a sound check at the first concert that this dive bar beer joint has had since COVID started. Then we are going to a junk shop or an antique place. And we're going to see what they got there. And you're going to see what's in my brain when I walk into one of these places. Now, I've gotten a few things from this particular one that you've seen before. Then we're going to, oh, we're going to plant cotton. We're going to plant cotton. I got my own plantation. Okay, it's a whiskey barrel, but nonetheless, I'm going to show you how to plant cotton. I'm going to show you how to make stain which I've done in an episode called Grab Your Balls before. But I'm going to show you how to make cherry stain out of real cherries from Topanga, Cal Topanga Canyon blah, 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 rented lips. Which reminds me, there's a couple contest videos that I don't have a winner for. You just got a big hint there. A winner, like winner... Uh, South Dakota, yeah, winter, greetings winter, and um, yeah, you want to check out Johnny Winter Live, Stranger Blues, you want to see that one, um, and also Mean Town Blues, his version played at Woodstock, I am giving you a plethora of stuff, anyway, so we've got World Renowned Luthier, we've got Gig with the arch top junk pile being played at an opening on COVID. In fact, the exciting part about that is they did sound check. So my guitar was the first guitar played in this joint for a year and a half. Then we've got antique shop. Then we've got planting cotton. Then we've got making cherry stain. And oh, Last thing, I'm going to catch you up on this guitar that I'm making right now that's in my shop. Special request, Panola County, Mississippi. Highly themed. You're going to see some of that, but not enough to let you know what it is. It's going to have its own episode when it hits the artist. You will see this one 
played in Mississippi. Anyway, that's enough of this. I just need to run off the people that say their average watch duration is four minutes. So you guys got what you want. Now your life will be empty with you one day hitting, it's hitting you that, you know what? My life has been so incomplete because I didn't watch the end of Ken's episode and now I'm just going into the eternity. Um, just lacking all the knowledge I could have had while I was on the earth. Think that one out. Go to the end because that's where good stuff happens. All right. Let's go see my busy weekend. Okay. Adventure number one. You give me a like and you subscribe. That's adventure number one. That is going to open up a plethora of excitement in your life. Um, the other ones that already have done this will testify in their testimony that that is true. Okay, first real adventure. Let's go see. We're just driving up there under the pretense that we're buying some succulents. Do you know what that is? I don't need to know. Anyway, hiding behind a nursery somewhere is the shop of a world-renowned luthier named Fred Walecki. I'm going to give you some information down below in um, the resources section. You want to check this guy out. So, I went there, got a few minutes, shot a little bit of footage. I'm going back there because a world-renowned luthier, luthier is, above all things, busy and in demand if you are in the kind of place I'm in where people actually have some money in their pocket. So let's check out my little bit of time there with Fred Wolecki and I got something at the end. You're going to covet very badly to the point where I will pray for you and light a candle. Let's check that out. All right, do you see that? It says Eagles. It's an Eagles Road case. That is real. There is one over there from the Doobie Brothers, and I am at the door of a place that I've been waiting to get to for quite a while, and that is Fred Walecki's guitar shop here in Malibu. I took the liberty of setting up a couple of my junk piles, and hopefully he'll have a look at those and a good laugh because this guy is world-renowned. The guitars he's built the people he's built them for and the guitars he has serviced for bands I can't even begin to name them but we'll sit here a little bit and wait for Fred to arrive and we'll see what happens I'll catch you up I would really like to leave here with a part out of this shop All right, guys, we left the shop with the coolest thing ever. You want to remember that Fred Wilecki and his father, Herman Wilecki, Herman with two N's, had Westwood Music, and that was uh, Fred's father, Herman, was a violin maker and worked on things like cellos and stand-up basses and orchestra in instruments before Fred got into guitars. But anyway, what you're seeing here is the fingerboard off of a full-size bass. This right here is something. It's a once-in-a-lifetime once thing here. Um, thank you very much, Fred. We're going to treasure this forever, and I will see you again soon, my friend. Okay, so that was awesome. If you would have been there, you would have distracted me, but it still would have been fairly awesome. Anyway, I left Fred's shop, got in the car, walking would have been far less efficient, drove back to nonstop action acting, dressed up, got in the car, and went to Long Beach, California, 
cultural capital of the world. And I went to Alex's, which ha regularly has blues bands and other things like that. And when we're talking blues at Alex's, we're kind of talking like the outer limits of blues, like trash blues, Delta. I don't know what, what do you want to call it. Uh, anyway, you know about the band Restaurant, Restaurant got to their sound check and Troy had brought the Archcraft Archtop guitar. I'm going to give you the playlist of that one up there. We've seen people like Frank Goldwasser play that. Troy has played it. But you're going to see the first sound check that that bar has done in a while. Like the first one, my guitar first one. Anyway, let's go. Well, you don't have to go anywhere. You can just sit there. I'm doing the one doing all the leg work. You should appreciate that. Uh, but let's see what that looked like. say do your guitars actually work what do they sound like well again I got people like Frank Goldwasser who plays really well I've got people that like Troy Murrow that plays really well um, it depends on what your definition of really well is on my junk so I was happy to see that now let's get a little bit more cultured no we'll hold off on that I don't want to hit you with too much at once I'm going to go to Antique Asylum now I went already. This is past tense. This is not an English lesson. You're supposed to do your own homework. Anyway, you just sit there again in the comfort of your chair with that popcorn. Don't bite on those kernels. Your dentist said no. I talked to him. Anyway, now we're going to go to Antique Asylum. Now, you've seen me pick stuff out of Antique Asylum, including the guitar that I sent to uh, the UK and Victoria Bourne after it won the ribbon at the Antelope Valley Fair, got all kinds of ribbons. I hurt my back carrying them out. Anyway, let's take a look up there. You know what? I'm going to do that down below so you don't get sidetracked. I don't want to cause attention deficit disorder because I have that. I know what it is. Down below in the resources section uh, about Victoria Bourne, uh, her band, how to get her records, and a link to that video. So, Let's go up to Antique Asylum and see what we find there. Okay, guys, I am at one of my favorite places to go in and find scrap apparatus for my guitars. 
trinket stuff to put on the headstocks, license plates, coffee cans. There's even musical instrument section in here, maybe even a cigar box guitar or two. They certainly have a lot of records in here. Antique Asylum. They got everything in here you could ever want but never need. Look at this. Oh, look at that shelf. That is a testament to structural integrity. That shelf is fixing to run through its... Oops, this is a family show. I always like this booth. Oh, hello, is Bob Log there? Oh, look, it's my first grade girlfriend. Hey, Raggedy Ann. I love you, baby. And I always go towards the metal tins. Oh, look at this one. I wish that was metal. On a stave. Right there. Right. I always like to watch for these tins like this because you could put them under a bridge. What do we got here? That one's pretty cool. Blondex shampoo. If you use that, at least your hair will look like mine and that will certainly improve your popularity. Oh, check that out. I knew a risk manager named Kirkman. Kirkman cleanser. I could have used that a few years ago. Um, usually good stuff in here. That canned heat, Boogie with canned heat album is going home with me for sure today. Speaking of canned heat, you know the STP sticker on his guitar where they're opening up Woodstock? Ooh, steep, but yeah, original STP hat. Have you ever seen that video where Justin Johnson is playing a song called Don't Tear My Clothes with a ironing board, lap steel? Ooh, 25 bucks. That's pretty good. It appears to be all there and solid. We've got a nice suitcase that would fit a drum head, a la Shaky Graves. You know about Shaky Graves, you probably should. You know, I like uh, oil can guitars. This one's a little bit big. Uh, I couldn't make a coffee can out of that. I mean, if they would have just made it like that, oh yeah, then it's a winner. But the way it is now, nah, can't use it. Ooh, look at that one. Ooh, that's paint. Those are paper. This one's paint. Oh yeah, must have. Oh, price is criminal. Thank you very much. All right, you always want to check these boards, these little round trinkets and keychains and who knows what can fit on headstocks. Pretty cool. Always the maps, too. You never know what you're going to find in the maps. You know, I use those a lot. Oh, check that out. Must have. Please remove space. Spurs. Yeah, gotta have that for sure. This is the booth that I found, Victoria Bourne's California license plate. Um, I need to give you a link to something she's done with that right up there right about now. It was original, it had bullet holes in it, and it won a ribbon at the Antelope Valley Fair. These are cool. Um, California 1936, I got a 1922. In 1933, they've been repainted, but they would make good pit guards and stuff like that. The price on them is about 15 bucks. I think if you bought two or three, you could probably bring the unit price down a little. Here we go. I knew we'd find this in here. Um, somebody is selling cigar box guitars out of here. Uh, nice work, nice head stock. Three strings, burnt on frets and fret markers, nice box. I like this one. Again, unique. This one has frets, that's cool. Nice box. I remember when I used to do these until I couldn't keep them in tune. Uh, but yeah, nice work, everything burned in. So there's our cigar box guitar collection in the shop for right here. Done. We're going to one of my favorite areas in the shop. I have never seen a collection of stuff that you could covet. They got stuff in here you didn't even know you could covet. This is 
a place where you can discover coveting. Now, I bought a lap steel in this place before from this booth. I'll give you an, a link to that episode right above there, right about now. I forgot Chick Flick Teal, but there's a couple of Rick and Bacher lap steels there. And then we have the ace of the bunch, a silver tone lap steel hiding behind this awesome barber chair. In banjos, we've got a, I don't know what it is. We have a K. We have a silver tone. And then hanging next to that, we have a Stella Harmony. That violin body is very interesting to me. You're going to see me do something with one coming from somebody famous pretty soon. Maybe somebody that we've seen in this episode or will see. Look at this. We've got a K semi hollow body that's nice going into this area we got some an old squire and then we've got they've always got some of these old plastic guitars that you saw for kids from the 50s there's tv pal model oh look there's two different ones there they got a good yamaha guitar here and couple of acoustics you can buy a drum kit if you need to but look at this Tysco that is certainly a Gibson style open book headstock this is a lawsuit guitar this thing is in awesome condition the price $4.99 that's a good good price for that guitar you got a couple of cases here You've got an old air pump organ. Again, this place is cool. I like to see what this guy has, and I've purchased a couple things out of here in my travels. So let's see what else is in this shop. Oh, don't forget, got a washboard there. I've built an electric washboard or two. Uh, I'll give you a link to an episode about one right there. I miss Chick Flick Teal Pointer, don't you? All right, now you know where to go. But don't worry, I already been there. I got all this stuff I want, the good stuff, but there's probably something left for people like you. Anyway, um, what now? Oh, planting cotton. I am going to show you very quickly here how you can grow cotton for fun and profit at your own home. Let's take a look at what that looks like. I like doing this every year because you know that the kind of music I like was born on cotton plantations and um, juke joints were people's houses. And after being pushed all week, making very little, if any money, um, the sharecroppers is where our music come from, or at least the music I like to listen to and the stuff you see on this channel. So. I will be your horticultural guide today as we go plant cotton right now. Let's go. Okay, next project. Guys, this right here is cotton. You see that? Cotton does not come in raw form in a dish towel or in bib overalls. It actually starts off looking like this and if you squeeze this and start tugging at it there are actually seeds inside this cotton so we're going to take a few of these we're going to pull them apart we're going to clean them as much as possible get everything off of them but you end up with seeds about that big you can squeeze the cotton there's one two three four more in here but anyway this is what we're after okay now we're going to take a common paper towel we're going to fold it in half and half again like so i was a trigonometry expert in second grade i was way ahead of my class my whole class and then they caught up later and i fell behind anyway we're going to take four cotton seeds we are going to put them equidistant 
from everything. We're going to fold this in half. We are going to dampen this. It's not wringing wet. It, we're going to dampen it. And then we're going to slide it into our greenhouse. We know this is not a greenhouse. Uh, it is a common bag. We can put something in there to make this stand up like this glass slide that I know you're coveting that I just cut. And then I'm going to seal this. I'm going to put it by the kitchen window for about three days. All right, now after about three days, I am going to open this up. This is still moist. You can see there's condensation. Let's open this up. And voila, the miracle of nature. Would you check that out? They have sprouted. This first rootla coming out of here is called a radical. How radical is that? There's the first leaf here, this being a dicotyledonous plant. It will have two leaves. Do not remove the seed. Ever let the plant grow out of the seed. The plant is getting its nourishment out of the seed. If you pull it off, you will disrupt that process. Now I'm going to take these and I'm going to plant them in my field. Let's go to my field. Actually, I don't own the field. I lease it from someone and they usually take most of the money at the end of the year by charging me absorbent prices, exorbitant for things like my bibs. And then I'm trapped there for the rest of my life pretty much. Anyway, let's go to the field. Okay guys, welcome to my cotton patch. Well, it's not really a cotton patch. It's more like a barrel patch. And uh, I got this barrel here from a barrel house. Well, not really. I got it from Ace Hardware and that can be like a, have the ambiance of a barrel house, depending on the crowd at the time. How do you like my bottle tree? That That is at least semi-authentic. And this fender is posing as an aquarium for that catfish right in there. Tap, tap, tap. You see him, he's very aggressive. So anyway, to be completely serious, I got one of these tomato cages. It's coated in uh, rubber or plastic or something, petroleum byproduct. Anyway, I cut the legs of it off to sit in here because what's gonna happen is, I'm gonna plant the cotton sprouts where these little green cutoffs are. And when the plant grows up, what happens is it gets fairly heavy when the squares come on. Now, cotton bowls, while they're growing, they're kind of square. They're like, kind of like a cubicle square, and they get heavy, and the wind comes along. And if you don't have this here, they flop around, which creates vascular isolation, which creates plant loss. So I'm going to pop them in here, and let's set up where you can see me actually do that. This is enthralling. Okay, so here we go. We got our sprouted cotton seeds, four of them there. One, two, one, two, three, four. And um, I don't want to scab chick flick teal pointer's job or anything, but it's really important that we take our finger. This is a very scientific calculation. We need to put a hole in the ground about that big and about that long not that long or that long but exactly that long so i'm gonna go to each one of these we're gonna be inside of here we're pushing the ground like that and then like that you starting to get the idea here and like yeah, I'm trying to stay out of the picture because this is not all about me. Oh, that one's a little bit off. I won't be able to live with myself if it's there. Okay, right there. And then right there. Now, we're going to carefully take this. Remember the seed, the first root out is called a radical. We're going to put that in there like that. One. We don't want to damage anything while we're doing this. Two. So I'm 
sometimes that first root gets wound up in the, in the paper towel. They must have went through a lot of paper towels when they were planting fields in Mississippi. I know that. So now we're going to cover those up like that and we're going to and we're going to rub it and then we're going to pat it and then we're going to mark it with a B for baby and me okay now we're going to be keeping this real so I got to go through these do not covet my license plate from Wheaties boxes 1953, 54, and 55. Look at that. You saw that one on the Texas Junk Power one thereabouts. Yeah, we got a few Mississippis. There's a Mississippi. I, I think I'll use this one with the string on it already. Okay, so I'm going to take this string now. I'm going to run around there. That's very complicated. And I'm going to do a little grandma spit game here like your hair in church and put that through that hole right there like that and pull it through I'm going to pull the slack out of it like this and I'm going to run this through here and pull it down like that that was sheer speed I did that with you would think I was a calf roper in Texas you could bet that but anyway the whole trick here is people we come by here common passerbys they're going to see my cotton field and they're going to say oh my gosh we're in mississippi already Alrighty then that concludes this episode well it's not an episode it's a part of an episode so i guess it's a mini series on horticultural excellence okay let's get a little bit more refined now is that that part i forget anyway I am not a believer in buying store-bought products that create, create carcinogens. Remember, I live in California. Everything is a carcinogen warning. The stems on a cherry in California have a carcinogen warning. Anyway, I don't like carcinogens that you get in the store, um, especially in stains that we would use on a guitar like this. So I decided I can make my own carcinogen carcinogenic products at a much discounted rate. I'm going to show you how to make the stain we're going to use on the neck of this guitar. Let's check that out. Okay guys, I am going to use this neck. I made the headstock. Uh, you can tell it's some dark wood and um, I don't want the neck to be that dark. I do want to lighten it up a little bit though. I'm not going to like the way this looks. I can um, sand it and and spray it with a clear and that'll give it some color I, I like this world if you ever seen a small tree that puts out a ring of uh, little branches that never mount anything that's what that's from but anyway I went ahead and pinned it with some relic wood and um, it'll be ready to go on a coffee can or a cigar box or a license plate it could be any of the ones I make so I have a stock of these laying around now I did an episode called Grab Your Balls. It was about canning, and I showed you how to make some stain. I'm going to make another batch and go through this really quickly. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drive out to Topanga, California, uh, Topanga Canyon. Um, you're going to cross Ventura Boulevard, Ventura Boulevard going south, and about two miles up and, uh, up and around and around the curve, you're going to come across some guy selling cherries usually there till six o'clock about this time of year what time is it well let's just say it's hot okay so you're going to get this then you're going to go home and you're going to eat them you better get more than one of these because everybody at home can eat them and you are going to end up with just pits and you want more than pits you want pieces of cherry so you're going to can tax that's right new term can tax about 10 percent of the cherries out of the bag and you're going to put them in this bowl we're going to take this mason jar you, my mother told me don't use cur jars because cur jars uh, occur as a mutt dog you may find that attractive anyway we're going to put these in here you want to be very sanitary you want to dump these in here like this i know you're going to want to watch me do every last one i know that that kind of detail is important to my viewers 
we're just going to put all these in here like this and and if I eat one that's okay now if you're eating these and you miss some of these are double cherries so they have a little small pit and if you're eating them don't worry about that because trust me everything will come out in the end now you take this 80 proof vodka this is the only time I use this type of stuff can you imagine me loaded anyway doesn't have to be expensive I'm gonna put this in here like this see that this is definitely not rocket science but if you do feel the urge to use your rocket science pencil you go ahead and stir this around a little bit like that leave a little bit of head space here put the this jar in a place that's hotter than hell i.e. Acton California cultural capital of the world and you just leave it sit for a few weeks and it will turn into what you want now when you put this on the wood it's going to take a few days to soak in so if you try to put this on the wood um, it's probably going to be wet for a little bit and that will shun away any varnish or any lack or anything you want to put on this so this is a process but the less vodka you use the thicker the stain will be but this is natural stain so there there went about three minutes of our weekend even you see this guitar right here it's got a map of northern mississippi up there it's got some cool stuff on the back you can't see it is a license plate guitar or will be it has the fender trim from a Pontiac Catalina 1971 model it has a Mississippi Panola County 1972 license plate I'm doing some final work on this one I'm gonna catch you up with a little bit of that there will be an episode about this one for sure so let's go out and um, into my shed uh, I'm already here but you don't know it uh. all right we're back in the shop It's getting close to the end of the day on Monday and our weekend has drifted off now I have this neck in here there's a couple things I need to check while I'm putting it together on the body and that's where we're at right now you're gonna see a lot of uh, detail in the episode coming up I'm not gonna break that with you but the first thing we want to check is you see that mark right there I want to make sure that the vodka in my cherry stain doesn't go anywhere so we're gonna keep an eye on that okay so We've got the map Mississippi, northern Mississippi on here. There's a couple of towns like Como and Sardis, which are right there in the way of the camera, right about there. There's going to be fender tuners going on this thing. It's got a truss rod there. Um, and there's Tammy's signature, of course. And we use some different kind of wood here to get an accent. Um, there is a spot here for this coin right here you see it oh, that's gonna go right here you see that Ooh, that looks nice too bad you can't see what it says you'll see that in another episode anyway we're gonna put that over here a um, couple things first off we are gonna matchbook the neck here unless you are Fred not Fred why does it say Fred up there anyway unless you are George Mitchell you might not have any idea why it says Stuckey's right there or any of the rest of this stuff. But anyway, the person this guitar is going to knows exactly what that means. Anyway, those are these are have been digitized and sized, and they're going to go on the neck here. I want you to notice that I have used T-nuts right there. You see that? I want you to notice that the neck has been cut out under the heel board or on top of the heel board and then let me flip this around we have another t-nut right there and now this is all copper tape because we are going to ground this through the tail piece that goes to the end of the box and they 
sit right in here and mark up right in there. Anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take the body that we've built here. This is an MGB kit. Um, I've painted a, a, a secret color of paint that the person that wanted me to build it wanted. Again, there are T-nuts right here. Um, and you're going to see how this goes together. It's kind of a puzzle. So the way this works is this here slides right into there like so. And those T-nuts line up where the neck bolts to the box. Okay, I've turned it over now because I have to take the bottom of the box off. I want you to notice that I have painted the edges of the box and I have marked the box, the neck here and the tail piece here. Um, this is rocket science. That's why I've used the rocket science pencil today. Getting a lot of work today, rocket science pencil. But um, it matters because this has been fit to the box. I'm going to use a graphic here that you'll see and another graphic over the top. This is highly personalized and it's going to be highly coveted. So let's pop that off. You see how I did that. Why am I taking the box back of the box off? Well, let me show you. All this tape that's on here, there is a spot to ground the neck. If I don't put that tape on there now, what's going to happen is this is going to be trapped and I'm going to be working sideways. So you can see right there that I've made a hole. Let me make sure you can see it. I made a hole in the tape and I have put uh, made a spot for this mason jar, this highly technical mason jar piece of metal right there. And then I take this pushback wire here. You've seen this. I'm going to loop it a little bit like so. And I'm going to take it around this. And this will be how I ground everything to here. Of course, this wire will go to the bottom of the pot and then it will also attach to the negative on the input jack. Okay, so had I not put this on after I went through here but not to here, this would not have fit through the neck pocket. I want that ne neck pocket to fit nicely. But now it's, that it's in there, I can slide this up into that notch like so and then I can use these to go down into the I'm going to avoid noise pollution here and these nuts of course these holes that see if these nuts are countersank so I wonder if I'm out of the camera over here. Let me slide this up so I can make sure that you can see what I'm doing. How are we doing there? Yeah, right there. Uh, that neck sucks up. Right there. Everything fits just like so. Get those turned clockwise. Compass correct or I will be in therapy now. Those T-nuts will seat this just like a car. Again, I'm not going to pain you with a bunch of noise, but I think if you see me do this one, you'll know what happens to the other three. Okay? So, I've got some more stuff to do here. I already have everything prefab to put this on. And, um, well, you'll see this one again, trust me. And you are going to want it. So, that wraps up my day in the shop here. Been a long, but highly productive weekend. All right, guys. The sun is going down. It's been a long weekend. Okay, I just turned off the lights. It's actually middle of the day. Anyway, 
Um, wasn't that an awesome episode? Okay, so if it wasn't, just lie. Because you already have covered her, so I think lying comes... I think lying is the more desirous sin than coveting. I think coveting is worse. So anyway, thanks for watching. Give me a like if you haven't. I enjoyed this weekend. A lot of music-related stuff and a lot of feeders for future episodes. So hey, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.